I wanted to take you on a journey with this next piece of art. This one's going to be very special to me. Over the course of the years, I've used one tool that's really sort of helped me throughout my career, and that is the Apple Mac. And I noticed that they've just launched uh, the brand new iMacs with the M1 chips inside. And I had a little idea. Yeah, your sadness in this bowl do you feel mine that changes in your body? We've actually got a couple of old Mac Minis uh, surplus to requirements, so I had an idea what I could do with those Mac Minis, and uh, I suddenly thought that in itself is a piece of art. Lately, everything's trembling. All my shelters are opening. Feels like everything's crumbling. All the windows are shattering. Hold your horses, it's too cold to read. Face expressions that mean nothing. Dear, your sadness in this bowl. Do you feel my? Mm -hmm. So, way back in 1995, Apple bought out a computer called the Power PC. Now, I used to work on this Power PC and I come across this picture. So, in that picture is me working on a Power PC. Now, that Power PC was an Apple Mac Power PC and it was a proper good bit of kit. But to pay homage to the Apple Mac, and also, as a guy in this photo, his name was Andy. Unfortunately, he passed away years ago. Probably three years after that picture was taken, he had leukemia as a kid. And yeah, he lost his life. Um, and he sort of took me under his wings when I used to work at that company. <clears throat> so yeah, this piece of art is really to pay homage to the Apple Mac because for years that's been what I've been working on and also to pay respects to Andy as well, because that's sort of my roots. He, he took me under his wing and sort of showed me the ropes on how to work an Apple Mac. And because that computer was bought out in 1995-1996, I want to make this piece of art quite retro, quite in keeping with that era. So when I edit these videos, I use a website called Artlist for my music. It's all royalty free. And I was going through music on there the other day because I, I wanted a special song for this actual video, for this project. And I stumbled across probably the most perfect tune that represents this video. It's called Back in 95. Uh, I downloaded it. And I'm going to get that play and I'm going to get this image of this piece of art in my head hey, out of the way and it's been on my mind for absolutely months. Been losing all momentum Just because it's easy But that don't make it better I wanna take my hands deep down in the dirt Take a walk along the street if I'm feeling desert All of this convenience just doesn't work for me I wanna play with fire Let me get hurt Can we take it back to 95? Before we have this drama in our lives Life. There it is, the famous Apple Macintosh Now what drives me and what I get a kick out of is not only art and painting but also branding So what I've done over the years, I've worked with many different companies to create brands for them or to look at their brand and sort of take their brand further. What fascinates me with Apple is their branding over the years. Now you're probably thinking at home, well, what have they actually done with their branding? It's sort of the same as it has been for years. I'll explain what I mean. When the, when the sea sails. Before I serve, if I was to say to you the word Macintosh, what would you say? What? Macintosh. Macintosh. Hit. Huh? Hit. Hit. Yeah. Hit. Hit. So Macintosh means nothing to you. What? What's Macintosh? Okay. Where's your phone? Give me your phone. <laughs> what? If I was to say to you the word Apple, what would you think of? iPhone. iPhone. I don't understand. 
I hope you enjoyed that social experiment with my daughter. She still none the wiser as to what a Macintosh is. I think she's gone off to Google it, which is quite hilarious. Now, the interesting thing there I find about branding is her generation does not know what a Macintosh is. Now, her children will not know what a Macintosh is. So over the years, they've taken away Macintosh and just simply gone with Apple and the shape of the Apple. What was also interesting was when I said to her, if I say to the word Apple, she didn't say fruit, instantly she said iPhone. So that just shows you the power of a brand. In order for them to sort of drive some new interest, new engagement back into the brand, Apple over the years have always been associated now with an iPhone. And what they needed to do and what they've done, I think they've tackled it absolutely to the point. Their machines, which is their core, core business. If you go right back to the Apple Macintosh, when I started working on those computers in 1996, that was their core business. It was a powerhouse of a machine that you could do all of your creative work with. I think where they've got this really right with their branding, especially their new product range, is they've introduced a bit more color, which has injected a brand new life back into the brand, back into connecting sort of a generation with the actual IMAX again. So it's quite important to always sort of develop your brand. Well, I had this vision in my head for this painting, as I say, a while back, so let's crack on. I don't care on. about the scene, I don't care about the location, all that matters not to me, that you wherever I go, baby, I just need you by my side. Yeah. That's now been completely painted in black and we're ready for our retro apple design. So I've mixed up some green, some retro apple green, and we're gonna try and merge that into some of the new color green. So we're just gonna go on the side. I'm gonna try and leave some of that sort of black behind it as well. And then I'm just picking up on some of that dark green. And then let's try and feed that in this side as well. Cause girl, I know that you get me. So I'll go anywhere. Cause I'll go. So I'll go anywhere. Cause I'll go. So you can probably see where I'm going with this if you're a true retro Apple fan or as old as me. If you're not, I'll give you a little tip. Looks a little bit like that. That's just sparked off an idea. Because I want this to be quite retro, I've had another idea. So, before I go any further, paint down. to definitely tell where I'm going with this now. The classic retro apple colors sectioned all this out and we're gonna be painting it in with the final touch of that 95 under there to represent when the Apple Macintosh sort of really took over 1995 with that power PC. Gonna finish this one off, it's gonna be absolutely stunning. Just looking at the colors, this probably needs to be a little bit more yellow than orange because the next section's orange. But yeah, we'll probably go back and rectify that near the end. Don't 
Yo, what you got in that bag? Candy cigarettes and a Playboy Mac. Many used to have to work for that. Work for that. Work for that. Wait for me, gotta dial up. Can't call my landline cause it's all tied up. Just bike over then. Here comes the fun part, tape is going to come off and I'm going to reveal the 95 on this piece. No, I do actually like the look of it, I do love it. I'm going to leave this one on because we've got to paint over this one but yeah that one is etched into the, the colour. I can't tell you how excited I have been to paint this, as I say it's been in my head for absolutely ages so. I do actually like that. Let's get the tape off. Let's reveal the five. We're desperate to reveal the five. And then we're gonna get the last section in blue. And as I say, stick around because there's more to come on this. Yes! Look at that! 95. I haven't been filling out my little Apple logo inside with color, so. I'm just going to try and fix this yellow section where it should be pretty much yellow. So. Don't got no heart, I got an icebox. Brand new roller, swap out the G shot. Moving slowly, I know the street hat. No more double, go ahead and detox. Yeah, yeah. Came from the trenches, they ain't showing us no love. Dagging in the city, all we wanted was a hug. Yeah. Got carried away with myself. I turned off the camera as well, mixed in the blue paint up and I forgot to push record. But yeah, that's the blue section almost in there. My favorite color is blue. Probably recognize that from most of my paintings that I do. I'm not saying these are the exact Apple product colors, but it's my interpretation. And make sure my edges are covered. That's complete. I'm gonna let that go off and we're gonna do stage two to this painting and stick around. That is essentially the backing board for our painting. And the idea behind that is we're gonna be able to mount this onto this. But the next stage of this painting is now we've got our backing, we need to build some kind of frame that sort of sits this onto that backing board. In one of my previous videos, I have made a frame for one of my paintings. I'll just quickly show you that. So yeah, this is one of my paintings in question. And this frame that I've made is entirely from recycled timber. So the place that I got that timber from is a company called New Life Wood, and they're a charity-based company here in Essex. And what essentially that means is they go around to the building sites, they pick up all unused timber, and that's like all the timber they put in skips. Um, and they take that timber and they take it back to their yard and they recycle that timber and then sell it on. So the really unique thing about this charity is not only are they sort of recycling timber, which is brilliant for the environment, otherwise all this timber would go to landfill, they're also sort of helping out sort of the younger generation, the ones that are trying hard to get jobs. They can give them the opportunity to come and work for them for, I think it's like three months, which then allows them to put them on that stepladder in order to get a job. So yeah, they're doing absolutely fantastic work and you can also pick up a bit of a bargain. Right, enough of that, this is dried. Let's go and pick up some timber. Let's get this one finished. I'm getting excited. 
So we've got our recycled baton. That's our eight pieces of timber cut. Let's get them screwed together. Show you what we're doing. This is like a two part backing frame to this painting. So this is gonna be the actual backing to it. And then we're going straight on top with the painting afterwards. I've marked up on the back of this backing board a big square that I want to cut out. Go in with a bigger drill in each of the corners and then get a jigsaw and cut all the way along each line. Right, so I've cut the hole out and I've cut that section out there. But for now, we need to mount these two sections to this backing. So first of all, I've measured the, the gap between here and there. And I know that's roughly the same. So I'm just going to mark that. I'm going to take that away. I just want to find the centre of this board. So for that, I'm just going to draw a diagonal line. So essentially, I want to end up with a cross in the middle. So the reason I wanted to find the center is I wanted to then align this. So you want the fixing to go from the back side of this into these bits of timber. Easiest way to do that is mark up the entire inside and the entire outside of your frame. And then essentially once you've got those marked out, you can drill through each corner. If you look something like that with absolutely loads of holes in it. Right, your next stage is you want to line that back up, spinning it all the way over without anything moving. You should be able to screw straight through those holes and hit the timber. So we're about to drill through this item here and I'll explain what this is in a minute. But the reason why I was so nervous fixing that is because it's the backing plate to the actual Mac. It's now a case of this slots on like that and swivels around and locks in position. explain something about the Mac Mini. I decided to put the mounting holes in this sort of section here. I think this is like the speaker area and where everything cools off. I didn't want to screw into this plate because this is sort of where the fan is and you've got the memory chip there. So I was a little bit worried about a screw being in contact with any of those components. So the grub screw that I'm using has got quite a head on it as well. That needs to sort of sit in that area there. I don't want to take responsibility for somebody doing this themselves, plugging in the Mac once it's mounted and something going bang. Yeah, just a word of caution. We're gonna just be going on with a grab adhesive on these edges and then mount the actual graphic that way. It's gonna be the easiest way to apply the graphic onto here. Now the fun part to get the painting in and position. Best way to do this is fold it ever so slightly and then you're gonna eyeball it. And this is just where you're lining it up in position now. Yeah, I've measured it, it's spot on. That is looking an absolute contemporary modern piece of art. A classic with a 95. Is that straight? Looks about straight. This is almost finished, but we've got one more stage this painting. But before I do that, I just wanna quickly tell you the reasoning behind this painting. So I've dedicated this piece to that Andy Waller, that guy that I used to know years back when I started my career as a graphic designer. I think with having him in my early stages of the career sort of showing me the ropes, what's going to happen to this piece when it's completed is it's going on our website which is flowworks.uk and once it's sold the entire proceeds of the sale will go to a charity and that charity is called the Rainbow Trust Charity. And I thought that's quite in keeping with the color scheme on this painting as well. Now the Rainbow Trust charity is a really good charity. They support seriously ill children, um, not only the child, but also the families too. The families need just as much support as the child that's seriously ill. They help support the family um, through those 
unbelievable difficult times and I couldn't imagine exactly the same with Andy when he was diagnosed with leukemia I think he was a child um, and he, yeah he lost his life when he was about in his early 20s I think so I couldn't imagine what it must have been like for his family to sort of go through that process and it happens today as well there's um, I think there's about 80 odd thousand seriously ill children in this country alone. This is your opportunity to not only enjoy a piece of art that's totally unique, also comes with a computer, but when that person buys it, they're not only buying a piece of art, an original piece of art, they're also helping support some families. So it's probably gonna be quite a good feeling for that person that can purchase this piece of art. So with all that being said, that leads me on to the final part to this painting. The original Apple colors have six colors, but the new IMAX have seven colors. And that additional color is, this is all the original rainbow colors, but there's one additional color that they've brought out. It's the silver color. We got the silver on the Mac, but I want to take this one step further and combine this into sort of one unique piece of art. In this pot, I have three different silvers mixed up. And what I'm gonna be doing with this silver, I'm gonna be doing an artistic flick on the painting. And what I'm aiming to do is to flick a section of silver hitting this area across the mat and down. It's gonna be one move, one flick, one go at this, but it, I think it will make it sort of one unique piece. Just a case of loading up some paint on your hand, having a bit of fun. Here we go. That is absolutely brilliant. I love it. It's completely unique. The splash mark's perfect. I was really worried that the logo would be covered up too much, but it's enough to make this one unique piece of art. So what are you waiting for? Please head over to the website if you want to check out this original piece of art. But one thing I'd like everybody to do is try and share this video around, put it on your social channels. Also, please, if anything, just give this one a thumbs up if it's just for the trust. It would go a massive long way on the YouTube's algorithm and hopefully, hopefully there'll be a buyer out there that will appreciate this piece of art and also, as I say, have that feeling of helping out a family at the same time. So it's a win-win situation for that perfect art collector out there. Have I splashed silver over my actual MacBook Pro? I've actually splashed silver over my MacBook Pro. That is full commitment into this painting. I'm gonna go and wash that off because I don't want to get paint on that. But I did want to get paint on this. Thanks very much for watching. Normal service will resume in next week's video because this was a long one. It took a lot of effort and a lot of planning. And until then, I will catch you in next week's flow work. Wait for me, gotta dial up. Can't call my landline because it's all tied up. Just bike over there. Oh!